is uh, what we see all the time. It's all this machine learning, deep learning kind of stuff. Uh, it's narrow AI because it's, uh, it usually focuses on just some vertical, really specialized application. And the configuration of the AI needs to be handled by programmers or experts. And it's usually really fine-tuned for that one situation and uh, for that one problem. So uh, the AI cannot adapt itself to a completely new, uh, new situation, cannot uh, transfer knowledge from one domain to another no domain and so on. On the other side, general AI is a, a different approach where you basically try to emulate the way people do their intelligence or how they use their intelligence. And uh, in general AI, uh, the idea is that uh, once it's solved, uh, you can plug this general AI into any product, problem, or basically in anything, the AI would find optimal way how to operate in that environment or that situation and achieve goals that somebody gives it. So this was the, uh, the introduction uh, explanation of what was the difference between narrow AI and general AI. And now uh, my personal approach to, to this goal was that since I was a child, I wanted to develop general AI because I was assuming, and I'm still assuming, that it's uh, the ultimate solution or like a thing with, or an invention, which if we solve it, uh, then the general AI can solve everything else for us. It can be scientific things, medic, uh, medical things, basically anything. So for me, it, it seems to be the most optimal way how to achieve all those other goals. So instead of doing them, I can just do uh, general AI and then let it do the, do the rest. So since I was a child, I was interested in this topic, but I knew that it will require a lot of research and a lot of work. And uh, because I also like programming, I uh, started to program video games. I started my video game company. I made some money there. And uh, now I was able to reinvest the money to general AI development. And uh, one and a half year ago, uh, I founded a Good AI. Uh, we are uh, 30 people at this moment, and uh, it's completely funded by me at this moment, and uh, we are uh, trying to develop general AI. <coughs> and uh, now to, the, to these uh, three pillars. Uh, so, uh, first pillar, the thing is to, is to come up with the right cognitive architectures, and this is basically uh, to know what, the, what is the intelligence that the intelligence is some kind of optimization or planning tool which tries to understand the environment, basically compress the environment, but in a way that's useful for achieving some goals. So the intelligence tries to extract only the important uh, information from the, uh, from the environment. Intelligence also tries to learn new stuff, uh, basically explore the world, but again, in a way which will maximize its future chances to achieve some goals. And uh, so this is the architectural point of view. This is something we are trying to, to set up. Uh, then the next uh, pillar is uh, to have right uh, neural network uh, modules or architectures. And basically, uh, we, at, this, at this day, we have so many different uh, neural networks and, uh, and so on. Uh, in my opinion, I'm not really focusing on any specific, or we are not focus, focusing on any specific uh, neural network architecture. We are just, uh, if we think that if we will have correct uh, architecture and the architecture will have some kind of reinforcement uh, learning or reinforcement signal, it will, it will enforce uh, the behavior of the neural architectures which will lie behind this, uh, this first uh, architectural uh, level. But uh, uh, just to be more precise, uh, what, what uh, we need from uh, uh, neural architectures, we need neural architectures that are able to represent uh, spatial and temporal information in the data, uh, to be able to focus attention on the, those parts of the data that may be relevant to achieving some goals, to do some uh, abstraction, to do synthesis, to do specialization, to do prediction, to do hierarchical uh, planning and hierarchical execution of goals, and so on. So this is, uh, in my opinion, this is the biggest um, challenge that's laying in front of us. And then the third uh, pillar, which um, I don't uh, hear people speak much about, is something we call School for Artificial Intelligences. 
And uh, basically, the idea is that when we will, or somebody else, will develop a general AI, at the beginning, uh, it will be like tabula, tabula rasa, so it will have uh, almost no knowledge, or probably zero knowledge about the world, environment, what's its goal, and so on. So uh, we will need gradual guided learning. Uh, by gradual, I mean that uh, the AGI will need to learn one knowledge after another knowledge, and basically build a new knowledge on top of the previous knowledge. So it's like when a person is born, uh, he doesn't just jump to driving a car, you know, or recognizing pictures of cats and dogs. You know, before you can actually start doing these things, you learn a lot of uh, things about the environment by touching the environment, playing with the environment, observing, like, if I do this, this happens, if I do this, that happens. And this builds a vast, vast um, amount of knowledge. And not only after you get to a certain level, you can get to a much more complex environment and much more complex uh, input from the, from the uh, environment. So we are actually able to understand it. So uh, we, in our team, are preparing a set of gradual steps uh, which, will be guide, which we will use to guide this AI through the learning process. And by uh, guided, I mean uh, it's not just enough to, to throw the AI to an environment that's completely unknown to the AI. Because if the AI would have to learn something about the environment, it would need to try many possibilities. And the, the uh, amount of possibilities that it should try can be practically infinite. So it's very useful if somebody who already went through those steps will guide the AI and uh, make, his, uh, make its life uh, easier you know, while learning. And then later, the AI can start doing its own creative uh, things. But uh, during the learning, it's usually good. And this also happens to all of us, that we had parents, we had uh, teachers, and they basically guided us through the learning process. So to achieve this, uh, we created uh, our internal uh, AI platform. We call it Brain Simulator. But it's nothing like a product or something like this. It's basically just a tool we are using to prototype some simple uh, models, milestones, some simple AIs that are achieve, able to achieve this or that. And the good thing about this thing is that we have one shared platform that the entire team can, can share and use. And if somebody makes something, he can really easily plug it to, to a model of some other guy, and then they ju just can continue. And as I mentioned, uh, I also have the game company. It's still running and, and uh, operational and working. And uh, one of our successful games was Space Engineers. And by the way, this game is why I am able to fund uh, AGI development. So what we are planning to do is to integrate uh, Brain Simulator or our AGI with Space Engineers and let uh, players in our game train AGIs in the game, basically by giving them reward and punishment signals or using something we call uh, imitation learning, which is that the player will do some stuff. He will like project himself to the AI, do some stuff. The AI will keep observing what the player is doing, learning the patterns, learning the reasons why he's doing this or that. And uh, then the AI will try to, to repeat it. And it's, again, uh, just a helping tool for this guided learning. So the AI doesn't need to, uh, to uh, explore all the options. Somebody will show, show him. And the advantage of this approach will be that uh, we will basically uh, give AI to 1.5 million players that we have right now. And uh, if researchers will want to use this, this ecosystem, uh, we will also give uh, players to AI researchers. So uh, if they will be playing with some models, you know, doing something, they already will have a lot of players that they can uh, cooperate with. Uh, this is how the prototype looks. In the background, you can see, uh, you can see a Brain Simulator. In the forward, you can see uh, Space Engineers. Uh, because I'm run running out of time, uh, one of the problems, commercial problems of AGI is that basically you can commercialize AGI only until you are at the end of the AGI. And when you are at the end of the AGI, you kind of don't need to commercialize it because AGI can do whatever you want for you. So in the meanwhile, while we get there, we'll be trying to come up with these little simple things like adding AGI while it's still not very smart to, to our games and so on. And we will be trying to find some other application. 
But in the future, we hope that the AGI will solve things like we'll have AI scientists, AI engineers, AI programmers, and basically AI anything. So thank you.